I will not perform the air brake test. My wheel is already chocked and I will begin with a safe start. A safe start that means that before I turn on the engine, I turn on the accessories and I make sure that the gauges recalibrate or reset before I turn on the engine. So what I have to do is to turn on the accessories and a wait to start light appears on my dashboard. I wait for that lamp to disappear before I turn on my engine. Just like this, I turn on the accessories. The wait to start light is right here. It now disappeared. And now I know it's safe to turn on the engine, just like this. That's, this is what we call a safe start. I will now wait for the air pressure to build up to approximately 120 PSI. So I take a look at my air gauges. They're right over here. There are two, front tank and rear tank underneath the bus. So those are my two air gauges. And when the air pressure reaches approximately 120 PSI, there is a device called the governor that will cut a burst of air. And we will hear that burst of air. It'll go Shh. This is it. So now, uh, after that, I deal with the early test portion of my test. So I do four things. I turn off the engine, then I turn on the accessories, then I apply my service brake and I hold it. Then I push this yellow diamond shaped knob to release my parking brake. It controls my parking brake. Just like this. Then I look for an initial drop of no more than 15 PSI. Okay, I look, I confirm the initial drop is no more than 15 PSI. Then I ask the examiner to check my time for a minute because I'm looking for an extra drop that should be no more than 3 PSI per minute. When the examiner tells me, okay, it has been a minute, I check and I confirm, okay, the extra drop has been no more than 3 PSI per minute. Then I deal with the low air pressure warning portion of my test. So what I will do, I will fan off the service brake with my foot that will make the air pressure drop. And before the air pressure reaches 55 PSI, we will hear a buzzer. We will see lamps or lights on the dashboard and a message that will indicate that the pressure is at a dangerously low level. <laughs> This is it. So we see the lamps, we see the low air pressure warning message, and we hear the buzzer. Now I deal with the spring brake portion of the test. So I will keep fanning off the service brake with my foot. And when the air pressure reaches approximately 40 PSI, the yellow knob of the parking brake 
will pop out like a spring. This will mean that the uh, at that point the parking brake will be engaged. <laughs> just like this and this completes my air brake test but now what I have to do I turn on the engine I let my pressure build up again and when the air pressure gets above 55 psi my low air pressure warning and my low air pressure lamps or lights will disappear so that's what I, I will deal with right now Okay, so my lamps and my low air pressure warning message disappeared. So at that point, I would normally go outside, unchuck my wheel, come right back, sit over here, and wait for my air pressure to reach approximately 120 PSI. And again, we will hear the governor cut a burst of air. This is it. The pressure reached approximately 120 PSI and we heard the burst of air. Now what I will do, I will check my service brake. So I apply my service brake. I put my transmission into drive. I push the yellow knob to release my, my parking brake. I let the vehicle roll no more than five miles per hour and then I apply the service brake again to confirm to confirm that the vehicle works properly so I press the accelerator and I stop the vehicle and the vehicle is not hanging from side to side it's not moving that means that my uh, service brake works properly now I will check my parking brake. So I apply my parking brake, I pull on that yellow knob, I leave my transmission into drive, I press the accelerator again, and the vehicle is not going anywhere, the vehicle is not hanging from side to side, that means that my parking brake works properly. Now what I do, I put the transmission into neutral and that's it